So, our first topic is all about units and measurements. So, as a physics, I mean, a physics subject is also an experimental science. So, meaning that we need to study also its units and measurements because uh, we need a theory in physics that must be proved in experimental so experimental is actually uh, composed of many measurements so you need to to be familiar uh, to be familiar with all the measurements uh, used in physics okay so first here here's our outline so what is physics so we have to define physics because that is this is basically the first the introduction to physics okay this is your first physics nga course and then second is understanding based and derived physical quantities so we have different uh physical quantities and they can be categorized into base or derived and then the second is all about conversion of units and i think uh, we will not tackle anymore about significant figures okay so uh, you already tackled that one in your chem and here in physics it's not actually not uh, not very important to me okay so unless if you are going with a high precision or high accuracy uh, uh, experiment but for this we just have to uh, stop with conversion of units okay so we have to omit omit the significant figures okay so what is physics pala so physics is a study of property a uh, study of matter and energy so it's uh it study the how energy interact with matter so we know matter is composed of uh is anything that occupies space diba so bumanggit na ang basic uh, that is actually the basic definition of a matter and energy energy is uh, as in your uh, kind of basic science you know different types of energy like mechanical kind of sa inyong electric fan that is called mechanical then electrical energy electrical energy kay kind of inyong mga lights are uh, due to electrical energy then light energies of course uh, that is the response of electrical energy so mo nang mo siga ang suga i mean uh, the lights will turn on because of electrical energy so there are many types of energy so how do this energy interact with matter okay so for example light interacts with matter so the light energy interacts with matter so naatay properties of light in a matter called reflection naatay refraction naatay diffraction naatay interference so these are the uh, phenomenon that causes the interaction of light energy and matter so this branch of science or in physics is called the optical physics or optics so, mga siya, the study of light. So, next, how electrical energy interact with matter. So, for example, uh, i, ko ani mo, i, i plug ni mo, i mong, uh, you will plug your, uh, you will turn on your bulb or your light sa, uh, in your house by uh, plugging on the, uh, the, ko an, the, Mm, socket, diba? I, ano yung socket. So, you can see that the light bulb, or mean that your light will actually kanang musiga siya. So, it will light because of the flow of electrons. Now, the flow of electrons is basically due to electrical energy. So, how this electrical energy interact with the matter? So, the matter here is the flow of electron so based on this interaction so there is another branch of physics which is called electromagnetism so the 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 interaction of electrical energy to matter so magnetism also is uh, it's all about magnet the interaction of 
magnetic energy to matter. So, natin yung tawag na electromagnetism. Now, sa mechanics, which is our focus sa Physics 81, is all about mechanical. So, from the word mechanics, that is mechanical energy. So, there are actually two types of mechanical energy. We have uh, potential, we have kinetic energy. Diba? So, how do this matter, uh, how do these two mechanical energies interact with matter? So, just like this one. So, Akong gip, uh, I will hammer a nail. So, you can see that uh, the nail, uh, the hammer from the start, has a potential energy. And if you will move the, the hammer to a certain distance, it will transform to kinetic energy. And then, it becomes a mechanical energy. So, the interaction of the hammer, uh, the potential energy and kinetic energy to hammer... And it transfer niya sa nail. This is called mechanics. Same also with a bow and arrow, di ba? So, if you stretch the bow, so makit, uh, you will see a potential energy. So, you can feel the potential energy. Then, when you release the arrow, so that's the time that all of the potential energy uh, will convert it to kinetic energy. So, that's how a mechanical energy interact with matter. So, this is another branch of physics that deals with uh, interaction of mechanical energy to matter so which is the branch i the mechanics na branch of physics okay so there are many there are actually many uh, many branch of physics so natay relativity natay uh, what else quantum physics uh, so but these are uh, these are the uh, major major na uh, mga branches sa uh, physics so we will not dig deeper about that okay so why do we study physics man so unsa may what bakit important ang physics so because just like biology just like your uh, course uh, physics is a fundamental science diba so just like chemistry so physics also is very important okay very important to understand how nature, uh, what is the mystery of nature, how nature interacts with us, okay? So, it is very important to, to understand your surrounding. So, see, si physics will explain that, uh, that, kanang, uh, that question, nga how, how nature uh, respond to some changes, like, sa, atong, at, uh, sa, uh, sa ato ang rotation sa earth and so on how mm, sa man revolve around the sun so that is actually the e physics so yan na kay important ang physics but not only about that so di lang sa mga galaxies and uh, stars and the revolution and rotation of earth but also for engineering and technology so basically nag evolve ang uh, the evolution of engineering and technology comes from the fact that physics is the foundation of all that uh, evolution. Okay, so kanang mga buildings, uh, civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, these are, uh, as you can see, sa tana, uh, all of that engineering courses, so you can see that physics is actually the foundation of it all. So kung, uh, if there is no physics, so gigiba lahat ang foundation ng engineering. Okay, so also sa technology like medicine, so it's very important for uh, physics sa medicine. So just like mga MRI, the magnetic resonance image, imaging, so makit, uh, we can see that uh, sa mga different na kuan sa tong sulod, you know, so sa atong mga inside, so without even, uh, without even na kanang dissecting our body, so uh, we can see what's inside, what's wrong inside, sa ato ang, uh, in our body. So, that is actually physics. Okay? So, the interaction of radiation in your body. So, that is uh, in the field of medicine. So, physics also. How about your uh, course, your biology and other sciences? Of course, uh, biology is a study of life, diba? And us, life is composed of atoms and molecules and atoms and molecules are actually 
uh, governed by the laws of physics. So, naaputa yung mga uh, sa atong sulod sa itong body, how uh, how kanang cells interact with kanang mga salt solution, mga ani, that's because of uh, some part of that kanang explanation is from physics. Okay? So, inana ang inana actually ang uh, importance sa physics. So, these are uh, almost all of the uh, sciences, ang foundation is physics. Okay? So, we have to study physics. Now, we are done with physics. So, we will now talk about what are the different uh, physical quantities in physics. Okay? So, we have to define physical quantities. So, physical quantities actually uh, from the word physical a quantity that is measurable nga makita na to mahikap ma feel ana ay dili pud na feel okay so atong ma uh, makita gyud na to ang measurement okay so unlike sa non physical quantity like emotions feeling of a person so these are not a non physical quantity so these uh this mga emotions and feeling of a per, of a person is actually a study of psychology na so these are uh, out of our forte sa physics so the uh, we will not study about non physical quantity so example of a uh, physical quantity a quantity that is measurable are the mass of a person the body temperature time the and etc so there are many physical quantity good na involved even sa atong everyday uh, uh, life there are so many physical quantity so bisag asa ka so anywhere you go there is still physical quantity involved okay so what are the different uh, parts of a physical quantity okay so physical quantity can be expressed as a numerical value plus a unit of measurement so for example i want to measure the length of a meter okay so here the length is actually the physical quantity so physical quantity kato ang measurable nga quantity so kao na ko ang uh, how long a meter is so the length is a physical quantity now the length of a meter is actually equal to 100 centimeter so the physical quantity is composed of a numerical value that is the 100 and the unit of measurement that is the centimeter so mo na ang parts ato ang physical quantity now the unit of measurement is actually adapted sa mga standard so sa mga natay ginatawag ng mga standard unit so that is internationally nga gina uh, gina use okay gina use sa tanan okay so these are universal universal ang uh, what i mean universal so for example so there are many types of units so for example uh, naka unit for mass naka grams kilograms pounds tapos sa length naka miles meters feet inch sa volume kay naka galu galun tapos na uh, cubic meter and so on so mo na ang uh, different kinds of measurement now So before we tackled about measurement, a uh, mga unit of measurement. So we have to to study first the two types of or the two kinds of physical quantity. So physical quantity can be categorized into two: the base quantity and the derived quantity. So the base physical quantity are quantity that cannot be defined in terms of other physical quantity. Okay? So, dili siya ma-define. Siya good ang, uh, siya talaga yung uh, pinaka-base sa lahat. So, di, hindi siya ma-derive ma, ma or ma-express ma as other physical quantities. So, I will give you some example about that. Now, so, ba 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 babalik tayo sa unit. So, sabi ko nga unit is uh, quantity adapted as the standard. So, sa standard kasi, meron tayong tinatawag na international system of units. So, uh, ginatawa, uh, 
tinawag yan siya ng SI unit. Okay, so you can see na, uh, what is the SI unit of this? What is the SI unit of that? So that is the system international D units. Units. So I don't know how to read that one, but uh, you know that in English that is actually equal to international system of units. So, ano pala yung different base quantities? Okay, so marami kasi mga base quantities dito, di ba? So, example of base quantity are this one. The length, the mass, time, electric current, and temperature. So, these are uh, some of the base quantities, the base physical quantities. So, the symbol of length is usually given by letter L. The symbol of mass is given by letter M. The symbol of time is T. The symbol of electric current is I. And the temperature is the capital letter T. Now, that is the physical quantity. But how about for the unit? So, unsa may unit, diba? Diba, ingon ko, ang physical quantity is composed of a numerical value and the SI unit. So, we have to focus on the SI unit. So, the SI unit or the base SI unit of a length is actually a meter. Okay, so remember that one. For the mass, ang base SI unit niya is kilogram. And time, second, electric current is ampere, and temperature is for Kelvin. So these are the different symbols for the base, for the different base SI units respectively. Okay? So, just, so these SI units, okay, since base man sila, they cannot be derived or they cannot be expressed as other physical quantity. Okay? So these are the, uh, shagit ang foundation sa, SI unit. So, mo siya ang base, ang framework. Okay? So, mo siya ginana. So, mo siya, siya ang pinaka, you know, basic, ang basic na SI unit. So, now, since we are done with the different base physical quantities, how about for the derived physical quantities? Okay? So, for the derived physical quantities, we have here, uh, the definition is derived by combining base quantities. So, it Ang derived quantity, from the word derived, so can be expressed by combining base quantities. So, we can combine uh, the base quantities here, or the this one, base quantities, to form a derived quantity. So, in ana ang derived quantity. So, gikan siya sa uh, the quantity that is based from the base quantities. Okay, so, ano siya. So, what are the different examples of derived quantities okay so here not a area so area here is usually symbol by letter a so the formula of your area is length times width so length na asay base as a unit nga meter di ba ang width is na abut siya base as a unit nga meter so therefore n times m is meter squared so this is actually the symbol for uh, the unit of your area so the unit of your area is meter squared but that is not a base quantity the meter squared is actually a base quantity coming from m times m because m is actually the base quantity so derive the quantity ang area so how about volume so volume is usually symbol by letter v so dako nga v so we have length times width times height so we have m times m times m and that is equal to m cube so this is the si unit of volume but this si unit or this unit of volume is not a base si unit but a derived unit coming from multiplying m m and m so to look m at the multiply so we have cubic meter so, mo na ang yang base as a unit. How about for velocity? So, usually ang velocity is uh, symbol by letter, small letter V na italized. So, distance travel divided by time. So, the distance travel is actually in meet, in uh, in unit. So, that is in meter. Mo na yang, yang units in, in SI. Okay? So, about the SI unit of time. So, that is second. 
So, meter ay dis distance travel divided by time. That is, meter per second. So, this is actually the unit of velocity in SI unit. Okay? So, dili. Uh, this is not a uh, base SI unit because it is derived by dividing meter and second. So, dili siya uh, base quantity or dili siya base unit derived lang siya. How about for acceleration? So, acceleration, symbol by small, small letter A. So, that is the change in velocity divided by time. So, para siyang, uh, what is the symbol of velocity? So, velocity is meters per second per second. So, mo meter per second divided by second. And that is equal to meter per second squared. So, this one, the meters per second squared is actually not, again, a base unit, but a derived unit coming from dividing the meters per second with a second, with a time. So, muna natay meters per second squared. How about for momentum? So, momentum is usually symboled by small letter P. Nga yung formula na mass times velocity. So, mass has an SI unit of kilogram, muna yung base SI unit, and velocity has a base SI unit of meters per second. So, this one is actually not a base quantity. That is actually a derived quantity coming from multiplying mass and velocity. So, how about for force? So, force is... Uh, is given by a formula of mass times acceleration. So we have here the SI unit of mass is kilogram and the SI unit of acceleration is meters per second squared. Again, this is not a base quantity but a derived quantity coming from multiplying mass and acceleration. Okay? So now, kung makita din mo sa uh, uh, kung makita niyo sa pinakalas nga column you have here a special name. So, the area, volume, velocity, and acceleration and momentum has no special name for that base as a unit. So, ito lang talaga yung base as a unit nila. But, for the force, meron siyang special name called Newton. So, meaning that Newton is actually equal to kilogram times meter per second squared. Okay, ito lang yung special name nila. So, special name is one way also para ma, uh, ma, uh, ma less hassle na tayo sa mga ganitong mga base as a unit na i-express pa natin na ganito. So, we can simply write this one as Newton or symboled as capital letter N. Okay? So, we are done with base and derived quantities. So, next is all about uh, scientific notation. So, some of the uh, quantity kasi, if we measure uh, in experiment, usually we get a very small and very large number. So, we have a possibility that we can get uh, a, kind of, a kind of number na very large and very small. So, most scientists is usually, uh, uh, usually use scientific notation to express the very large and very small numbers. Okay, so these are called the scientific notation. Okay, so para less hassle na tayo na pag-express sa, sa mga, uh, sa very small numbers at very large number. Okay? So, the general form of scientific notation is given by this one, this formula. N times 10 raised to N. So, the N here can be an integer or a decimal number. So, it depends on the precision and accuracy put sa, uh, put sa imuhang, uh, of your instrument or your uh, or what the problem was asked. Okay, so next, n is a positive integer for a number greater than 1. So, if your n is greater than 1, I mean, your if a number if that number is greater than 1, meaning that your n is positive, okay? But if your n is less than 1, 
So, your n is a negative integer. So, ganun lang ang mga scientific notation. Okay, so let's have an example. So, I know you uh, you already tackled this one in your chem. So, uh, ilang beses nyo na itong na, na, na pag-aralan yung scientific notation. So, this is like a review to you. So, para lang refresh lang sa mind, okay? So, for example, a green light of wavelength 0 0.0000000 Five one meter travels at a speed of three hundred million meters per second. So express these values in scientific notation. So a green light has a wavelength of this one. So this is a very small number, a number that is less than one. So we'll expect that your n here must be negative. Okay. So what you're going to do is you just have to uh, move the decimal point uh, kung asan yung gusto. For example, uh, we have to make the n to be a uh, to be a larger number. I mean, yeah. So, ato siyang i-move. So, 1, 2, okay, six, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, 5.1 times 10 to the negative 7. So, depende kasi yan, if, if you are going to to choose uh, like this one, so that is actually correct. But some, pwede, pwede ma din yan i-move up ka isa. Ay. So, pag move mo ng decimal point from 5.1, so i-move mo yan, maging 51, but this time, the integer becomes negative 8 na. Okay? But if mag-move, if mag-stop ka lang dito, so while moving, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is 0.51 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay? So, pwede din ganun. Pero usually kasi, parang ganito yung, uh, yung ano natin, yung mga ex, uh, expression for scientific notation where your your where your let mm, me this one where your mm, uh, number n here must be in the value from 1 to 10 diba so pero okay lang man din yung ganyan pero actually these are both uh, these are all correct so whatever uh, unsa, uh it based on the problem lang so what is asked in the problem so how about the speed of light? So at the speed of green light. So green light, so this is actually greater than 1, diba? Itong number na to. So meaning that your n, the small letter n here must be positive. So it must be positive here. This must be this must not be negative. So the decimal for a uh, positive, I mean a uh, larger number greater than 1 is actually naasha diri. Okay? So naasha sa n sa number. So what you're going to do is you have to you have to move the decimal point. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So dito kayo mag stop. So that is three point zero times ten to the positive eight. So dito hindi to negative eight. Okay, so positive eight yan. So dito uh the decimal point of a whole number is actually located at the end. So, dito siya. Okay? So, unlike sa, sa number nga less than 1, so, makikita, makikita, tam, makikita tam din natin yung decimal point because it, it is actually written in, uh, in, an, in the number if less than yung number. Okay? So, I, I know that you, you already know about this one. So, this is like a review to you. Okay? So, but if you have any questions, you can ask me naman if ever that uh, you, ha you still have dif difficulty in using a scientific notation. Okay? So, we are done with scientific notation. So, next is all about a conversion of units. Okay? So, wait lang. So, ano pala yung... Uh, so, before going to conversion of units, so, it is... It is best if we 
uh, if we study first about prefixes so prefixes so because some of the conversion units involve a uh, mm, uh, prefixes kasi so that is why it's very important to use uh, to study first prefixes so what are prefix so prefix are actually a phrase or word that is placed at the beginning of an um, of a word diba so if uh, say in English so it will change the meaning of a word for example uh, do so redo so meaning you have to repeat again so that's how you change the meaning of a word by simply placing a prefix so prefix from the word pre so that is beginning beginning of a word so so we have different prefixes sa uh, physics okay so prefixes sa uh, physics so we have here so usually uh, these are not the whole prefixes in physics but there are so many prefixes so these are just uh, the basic that usually used here in the book or in our uh, in our references okay so we have ritera with the symbol here uh, with the factor so that's uh, that is actually the uh, the uh, mm, you will multiply with a number if you have a prefix like this okay so a quantity with a prefix has a unit of the form for example the prefix plus the SI unit okay so for example the SI unit of length is meter the SI unit of uh, of time is second but the SI unit of mass is uh, in prefix is actually not kilogram but we know that is the base SI unit but the S uh, in prefix actually gram is used instead of kilogram so maula diha lang siya uh, uh, dito lang tayo nagka na nag change ng as a unit diba so the length is meter the time is second but the mass is not kilogram but gram okay so for example gusto mo na uh, i i will say decimeter so decimeter so meter is the si unit and deci is the prefix so what is the um, what is the factor of decimeter so that is 10 to the negative 1 okay so mo na ang uh, you will factor your numerical value for example i have one decimeter so if i have a one decimeter so this means that in meter that is 1 times 10 to the negative 1 meter so that is the uh, that is actually the um, the the meaning of the one decimeter in meter so usually kasi if uh, ang prefixes so just like scientific notation are very convenient in also expressing very large and very small numbers diba? so that is why we have here prefixes so it is very important to know prefixes because biology uh, uses very different na mga organism that is very small diba? so usually we can express the length of the cell in prefix or in scientific notation so that is why it is very important to study prefixes as a biology student so for example so di lang to example okay so for example we have 200 meter so how can we express this one in prefix okay so first we have to express the this one in scientific notation so we have 2 times 10 raised to 2 meter okay so 2 times 10 raised to 2 so this 10 raised to 2 is actually a factor of hecto so hecto siya. so meaning 200 meter is actually equal to 2 hectometer so that's how you do uh, you do prefixes okay so another exa example 0 0.002 meter 
So that is actually equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 3. And then the factor 10 to the negative 3 is actually the, as you can see in the table, the milli. So therefore, 0 0.002 meter is actually equal to 2 millimeter. Okay, from the word, I from the factor 10 to the negative 3. So how about letter C? 0 0.0000009 seconds. So first, we have to convert this one into scientific notation. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 9 times 10 to the negative 7 seconds. But as you can see here, wala tay times 10 to the negative 7 nga prefix. Okay, so what you're going to do is actually it depends on what the problem asks. Okay, so for example, if I will convert, if I will make this one into microsecond, so what you're going to do, you need to, uh, to uh, convert this one into a scientific notation where it ends into 10 to the negative 6. Diba? So here, that is actually 0 0.09 times 10 to the negative 6. So times 10 to the negative 6 is actually the symbol for micro. So that is 0 0.09 microsecond. Or if if the problem asks, uh, I will convert this one into nanosecond. So what you're going to do is you just have to shift again. So, negative 7 na siya. So, again, so, di naman ang decimal point, di ba? So, you just have to shift uh, in two places. So, 1, 2. Then, you have to change 7 to negative 9. So, we have 900 times 10 to the negative 9. Or, the 10 to the negative 9 is actually a factor of prefix nano. So, we have 900 nanoseconds. Actually, it depends lang din sa what the problem ask okay so that is the prefixes now other than prefixes okay so wait mag convert muna tayo ng units involving prefixes okay so we have to convert 0 0.008 gigameter to micrometer so how can we convert this one so remember that gigameter So, how can you convert this one? So, first, you have to, to to make sure that this one, your number here, must be in scientific notation. So, that is actually equal to 8 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay? So, we have here... Mm, gusto na ko siya itong micrometer. Now, to convert this one, you need to to, to know that 1 gigameter is actually equal to 1 times 10 to the 9 meter or simply equal to 10 to the 9 meter because what uh, if you multiply mo siya sa 1, 10 to the 9 meter lang ang yapon siya. Okay? So, we have here 1 gigameter is equal to 10 raised to 9 meter. Now, the parenthesis here is actually called the conversion factor. Okay? So, where you where you uh, by using this conversion factor, we can change the unit from one form to another. So, for example, gigameter. So, we need to use the gigameter uh, uh, conversion factor. So, it's like actually multiplying 1 because 1 gigameter is equal to 10 to the 9 meters. So, parang nag-multiply ka lang ng 1. So, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the numerical value. Still the same. Okay? So, don't worry about multiplying the conversion factor because it's like you uh, you multiply it with 9, uh, you, with 1, okay? So, now, you can actually change the place of a this one. So, we have pwede din, and 1 gigameter is doon sa taas, and 10 to the 9 is doon sa, sa dinamiti, denominator, depends on the uh, the pinaka uh, yung pinakauna na unit for example gigameter yung kasi pinaka pinakauna na unit so so what you're going to do 
is you have to place the gigameter in the denominator so that you can cancel them out. So you have to treat units like a number. So since they are the same number, I mean they are the same unit, so we can cancel them out. Okay? So nana lang siya. So then we have we we can now convert this one to meter. So we have eight times ten to the negative four times 10 to the 9 meters. So, meron, tang, meron tayong ganito na sagot. Now, we are uh, our purpose, uh, our aim is to change this one to micrometer. But remember, sa atong prefix, 1 micrometer is actually equal to 10 to the negative 6 meters. So, or 1 times 10 to the negative 6 meter. So, para lang ganun. So, but that is actually equal to 10 to the negative 6 meter man din. Okay, so now since the meter is actually here, so simplifying, so we have 8 times 10 to the 5 meter. Now we, we have to use this conversion factor, this one, to change our unit to micrometer. So this one is our conversion factor, so actually is actually equal to 1. Now you have to take note that the meter is the one that we're going to cancel because our aim is the micrometer. So, you just have to put the 10 to the negative 6 meter in the denominator. And then, ang, yung sa taas is 1 micrometer as your numerator. So, you can cancel this out. So, what's left? So, if you simplify this one, what's left is 8 times 10 to 11 micrometers. So, you are, you are kanang, uh, left with a unit of micrometer. So, the 0 0.0008 gigameter is actually equal to 8, ten, 8 times 10 to 11 micrometer. Okay? <clears throat> so, another example. <clears throat> How about this one? 78 micrometer to megameter. So, megameter. So, how can we convert this one? So, again, take note. You have to you have to convert this one first to scientific notation. So we have seven point eight times ten to the one micrometer. So that is a micrometer. Now using a conversion factor that we had in example letter A. So we have this one, but this time we we uh, we have to cancel micrometer because uh, ang atong aim is megameter man the kaninga uh, unit okay megameter so. We can change the position of our conversion factor, so we can rep uh, we can put a one micrometer sa denominator and ten to the negative six meters sa numerators and cancel out micrometer. So what's left is this one. Okay, so sima simply uh, you can simplify that one. So seven point eight times ten to the negative five meter is the answer. Now again, we have to convert this one again to megameter. Now, for a megameter, one megameter is how many meter? So, that is equal to 10 to the 6 meter or 1 times 10 to the 6 meter. So, parang ganun lang. So, here, one megameter is equal to 10 to the 6 meter or 1 times 10 to the 6 meters. It doesn't matter kasi if you multiply this with 1, so what's left is 10 to the 6 meter ram, uh, meter raman gihapon. Okay? Parin. So again we have to 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 take note of the conversion factor you have to place the the position of the megameter uh sa numerator so that we can cancel out meter so we can cancel out meter meter and then what's left is the megameter then uh, simplifying so we have 7.8 times 10 to the negative 11 megameter so therefore the 78 micrometer is actually equal to 7.8 times 10 to the negative 11 megameter. Okay? Okay, so malapit na tayo. So, conversion of units uh, involving syst another system of units. So, here we are done with conversion of units involving prefixes. But how about if... Uh, ibang system of units na kasi we are focusing kasi sa SI unit system, di ba? So, marami kasi mga system of units. So, we have uh, the other system called 
US customary system. So this mga units are usually used in US or other neighboring countries, okay? So these are the given na mga conversion factor for uh, for converting an SI unit to a US customary unit or vice versa. So for example, what are the different types of customary unit? We have miles, yard, inch, foot, yard, then we have minutes, and we have ton, we have slug, and these are all uh, US customary unit. So the following here are the uh, conversion factor that we will use on depending on what the problem is asked okay so we have the length the mass the time and the volume and there are so many other u.s customary uh, conversion factor but these are actually the basic lang okay so marami talagang mga uh, customary conversion uh, conversion factor okay so but we can use this one because these are the uh, usually used na mga uh, u.s customary unit in this reference Okay, so malapit na tayo, okay? So, how about convert the following? So, 20 miles to centimeter. So, how to convert this one? So, usually kasi pwede lang din natin i-convert this one to i-conversion nga calculator, di ba, sa internet. Pwede lang, uh, pwede lang na ka nang uh, i-like, i-direct. But, we have to stick with our given na mga customary unit here our customary conversion factor okay so by sticking that one so ang taas talaga ng process so we have a long process here so 20 miles first we have to convert this one to kilometer so kasi si kilometer kasi yung yung pinaka near ni centimeter diba so here a mile is actually equal to 1.609 kilometer so we can use this conversion factor so we can cancel mile and then what's left is 32.18 kilometer now next is we have to convert the kilometer to meter para makonvert naman natin yung meter patungo ni centimeter so how many meters are there in one kilometer so we have 1000 meter so we can uh, cancel the kilometer here because one kilometer is actually equal to 1000 meters so depend uh, based on your prefixes diba? so 10 to the 3 meter then after that so since we are done with uh, kilometers so what's left is actually meter now our aim is the centimeter so we have to convert meter again to centimeter but how many centimeter are there in one meter? So we have 100 centimeter. So sa prefixes pa din natin, di ba? So one meter is actually equal to 100 centimeter. So we can cancel meter here. So remember, place the conversion factor uh, anywhere you want. Uh, as long as you can cancel out the unnecessary na mga units. Okay, so delete na to uh, uh, yeah, it's not our aim na units, okay? So we can cancel meter, so what's left is centimeter. So by multiplying all of this, so the answer is 3,218,000 centimeter. And in scientific form, that is 3.218 times 10 to the 6 centimeter. So you can... Uh, express your answer in scientific or you can express this one in any lang. So, it depends sa uh, direction. So, so ako raman, uh, I will just put that in the instruction so you can uh, you can read the instruction if we have a exam or quiz like this. So, next, 3, what is D? That is decimeter to yard. So, how can we convert decimeter to yard? Now, first, we have to convert this decimeter to meter. Okay, because meter is actually given man here sa atong conversion factor. So, we have here meter. So, mas dulo siya sa yard, di ba? So, next. So, here, 
actually it's mm, here so ang so i have i have a very long process here okay so you can actually so there are many ways to kill a chicken man okay so but uh here so diri pa lang daan uh, so at this point pa lang so makikita mo na nga you can actually replace because 1 meter is 1.0936 yard diba so or you can take a long process like me okay so i didn't notice na meron pa lang conversion factor dito nga 1 meter 2 yard so here if we if we uh use this one so instead of using this one so let's check if uh not taking the long process but using the one meter so i will just go to my uh, microsoft okay so i will just solve this one okay so not using this long process but using the uh, one meter is equal to one something a uh, yard okay so let's see if that is still equal to 0 0.328 so there are many ways to collect chicken kasi so it's up to you kung Gusto ba yung long process or gusto ba yung small process lang? So, hindi ko, hindi ko kasi na-notice na yung at this point pwede na pala. Okay, so sorry. So, sorry. So, my Microsoft is still... So, bagay. So, sorry. So, here. So... Wow, that is happening. So wait. So my Microsoft is, you know, very. So anyway, so since my Microsoft is very okay, so parang parang tanga to Microsoft. Na. So my Microsoft is not working. So maybe so so again. So we have here so three decimeter two yard. So you can use the long process or you can just use one meter is equal to 1.0936 yard okay so then you can find the yard <laughs> the decimeter the yard but the answer to this one is 0 0.328 yard okay so that is actually the answer now the last example is how about kilometer squared to feet squared or foot squared feet squared okay how about that one so how can we answer this So here, uh, since we have a square here, so the square means that we have kilometer times kilometer. Okay? So what you're going to do, so to find the kilometer squared to foot squared, so here, you can actually use the conversion factor here. Okay? So first, we have to convert kilometer to centimeter. Okay, since wala namang direct na kilometer to foot dito, so we have uh, first we have to convert the kilometer to centimeter first. So we have so since dala, dalawa ang kilometer dito, so mean that you need to have two conversion factor also para ma, ma cancel out talaga yung dalawa. So we have uh, 100 centimeter is equal no, it was one kilometer then 100 centimeter is actually equal to 1 kilometer then we can cancel this out tong dalawa okay so what's left is centimeter squared diba at this point centimeter squared yung mag left dito then next after centimeter so we can use this one so here so I will just drag it here 
okay so let me draw this one so i think it's not 100 centimeter is not equal to one kilometer bucket so i didn't know about this so that is actually wrong okay so i so baka may lapses ako dito Okay, so we have 1 kilometer times kilometer kasi kilometer squared. So first, we have to convert kilometer to centimeter. So we have 1 kilometer is how many meter muna? Okay, so we have 1,000 meter. Then that is again 1,000 meter kasi dalawa yung kilometer. 1 kilometer so cancel this out so what's left is meter square na so diba so we have here 1000 so 1000 squared is actually equal to uh, 1000 squared so 1000 squared is actually equal to 100 1 million okay so 1 million so, 1 million siya meter squared. Tapos, i-convert natin na naman ito ng ano. So, can we uh, erase that one? So, that is meter. So, convert this one to again centimeter. So, para ma-convert natin ng inch and then to foot na dayon. Okay? So, since dalawa yung meter, so 100 cm. So, iligay natin yung cm sa taas. Para ma cancel yung uh, meter. So we have here 1 million meter squared. So we can cancel out meter, both of the meter. Oh uh, no, 1 meter is 1. Yeah, so, so we have here 1 million multiply with 100 squared. Kasi dalawa yung squared. So we have 1 times 10. To the 10 centimeter times centimeter or centimeter squared, di ba? So, next, i-convert naman natin ito ng inch. So, inch, so, 1 inch is actually equal to 2.54. So, ilagay natin yung 2.54 sa ibaba so that we can, con uh, we can cancel out centimeter. So, what's left is yung inch. Okay, so centimeter, cancel this out. So divide 2.54 squared. So we, I have here, so ang laki pala ng foot. So I didn't, ah, uh, hindi ko talaga nakita to. Okay, so we have 1, 5, 5, then 0, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, 0 inch squared. So next, inch squared or inch times inch okay inch times inch then multiply again this one with uh one foot times 12 inch i uh, one foot over 12 inch so gusto ko ma ma mawala si inch so i will just put foot above so 12 inch times one foot over 12 inch so cancel inch so, what's left is actually equal to, so I will divide this one by, so we have here 1.076-3910.42 foot squared. Okay, so or that is equal to, so we can uh, transform this one in scientific 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so 1.076391042 times 10 to the how much? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 foot square or approximately that is 1.076 na lang okay? times 10 to the 7 foot square okay so yun lang okay so sorry about that so hindi ko talaga nakita yung uh, 100 centimeters 1 kilometer so kasi it's
one kilometer is 100 centimeter no so one kilometer so one kilometer kasi one kilometer dapat mas okay so i think that's it so the sample problems are actually your uh, assignments okay so bye